Okay, so components. So first we're just going to talk about X and Y components, then we'll talk about uh, unit vectors, and then we'll represent the vectors as, uh, as involving unit vectors. So we're going to do components now. So here's my axis, and here is my other axis. Here is my vector. I'll do it in the first quadrant right now of the, the coordinate space. So this is the x direction. This is the y direction. And we said earlier that you can specify the the magnitude of the vector. So I'll say vector a magnitude is 15 units of something. Units, I'll just say units. And the direction is 50 degrees relative to positive x axis. So, because um, you know, it doesn't matter how I get from this point to this point. Um, I can. What I'm interested in is the resultant vector, which in this case I'm going to call A, is the resultant vector. So I can represent that as a vector which has components, and you can do the components relative to any axis. In this case, we have a horizontal and vertical axis, and that, and that makes the most sense. So I could represent the resultant vector here by taking a vector in the x direction far enough so that it comes even with this, and then have a, another vector which then goes vertically. And so if I look at this, I'm going to call this the x component. Well, actually, that's what, let's call it some other number. Let's just call it a vector. We'll call this vector b. This is the one from the origin here, horizontally, and you have vector C, which goes that direction, and you have vector A. So what you can do is you can just say that vector A equals vector B plus vector C, because I'm taking this vector, taking the tail at the origin connecting the tail of vector C to the tip of vector B, those two together give me a vector, resultant vector from the origin to here. And so what we can do is we can say that the magnitude, let's put this as a magnitude, we'll say the magnitude of vector B, which is in the x direction, is we'll call that the x component of vector A. So we, we use A, which is a, a representation of vector A. We use a subscript, which shows the direction. So the direction of this, this um, component is determined by this. This one is determined graphically that it's horizontal. Likewise, you can say that the magnitude of vector C, we're going to call that a special name. We're going to call that A sub Y. So this vector is the x component of vector A, and this is the y component of vector A. And we can say that if we add these two components together, then, and represent the bodies of the letters, just to keep things straight, that the addition of this vector and this vector give you the resultant vector, the original vector. And so by doing that, it just makes it easy. It's another way of specifying the direction without using an angle. So the way you would calculate, calculate these values, the x and y components of the vector, is by just using you know, right triangle geometry. So this is right angle. This is the two sides. This is hypotenuse. And this is the angle theta. Theta equals 50 degrees relative to the x-axis. So the x component of vector A is equal to the magnitude of A, which is the length of the hypotenuse, times the cosine of 50 degrees, because that's the adjacent side. So for our particular example, the magnitude of vector A is 15 units times the cosine 
of 50 degrees. Make sure you're using theta or degrees in your calculator. Okay, I am. So you get 15 times the cosine 50 degrees, and it's 9.64, round off to two decimal points. So A sub X, the X component is 9.64 units, whatever the units are. And A sub Y is the magnitude of vector A, which is 15 units, times the sine, because that's the opposite side for the angle. So you get A sub Y is, again, 15 units, same hypotenuse, times the sine of 50 degrees, and so A sub Y, the Y component is 15 times the sine of 50 degrees, and that gives you 11.49 units. Okay, so that's the basic idea. It's easy in the first coordinate, uh, first, um, first, uh, <laughs> A quadrant, quadrant. Now, because it's a right triangle, we can also say the magnitude of vector A is equal to using the Pythagorean theorem, A sub X quantity squared plus A sub Y quantity squared square root. So, in our case, the magnitude of vector A, which we know is 15, if we just knew the components, we'd take 9.64 squared plus 11.49 squared, and that should come out close to 15. Usually it should be exactly, but of course there's going to be some roundoff error because I don't, I'm not taking it out to an infinite number of digits. So I'm throwing an extra parenthesis in there. You don't know because you're not looking at me do my calculator, but okay. Let's try again here. So I get 14.998, which of course is not exactly, but again, I. So that's. If you have the magnitude and direction, you can find the components. If you don't have the components, you can find the magnitude and direction. And the other one, the angle theta would be equal to the inverse tangent of a sub y over a sub x. Again, that's just using the definition of the tangent. And if I do that, I should get 50 degrees. So if I take the inverse tangent of 11.49 divided by 9.64. Again, it's going to be close to 50. It's not going to be exactly equal to 50. And I get uh, 50.004. So that's uh, degrees. Okay, so that's how you go from one to the other. Now let's talk about the other. Um, quadrants, how do you handle that? It all depends upon how you, where you define your angle of the relative to. If you define your angle of the direction of the vector with respect to the x-axis, then you don't have to do anything different. The signs will all be taken care of. So let's say this is equal to, I'll say theta is equal to 127 degrees relative to the positive x-axis. But I could also define this relative to the uh, negative x-axis. So let's say that is uh, 53 degrees, I think. If you add those two together, you should get 180. So the for the red case, the x component is going to be equal to the magnitude of vector a times the cosine of theta, <laughs> 15, times the cosine of 127 degrees, and let's see what we get. 15 times the cosine of 127 degrees, 
and I get negative 9.03. So you see I get a negative number. And that makes sense because if I take this vector and I break it up into two components, the x component and the y component, you see the x component is, is pointing to the left, whereas positive x is towards the right. So that shows that that, that is the correct sign. Now, uh, a supply is going to be magnitude of vector a times the sine of theta, which is 15 units times the sine of 127 degrees, and you get a positive number, 15 times the sine of 127 degrees, and you get 11 point, positive 11 point nine, well, actually 9, 8, if you round up, 9, 8 units. And that makes sense because this is, this is a sub y, this is a sub x, so this is a positive vector because it's going in the same direction as positive y direction. Okay, so that's fine. Now, how do you do it if you're defining your angle with respect to the x-axis? Well, in this case, um, you've got a right triangle, which makes it easier from a geometry standpoint. Here, we didn't have, if we use this angle, we don't have a right triangle. We have like a, um, what do we have? We don't have a right triangle, okay? But if I define this as my uh, one side and this is the other, it becomes a right triangle in this quadrant. The problem is it doesn't, it's always going to give us positive values for these when you're talking about right triangles. So you have to look at the configuration of where you are and how the components are going to, uh, what the directions are going to be. So from a blue perspective, I would say a sub x. x is the adjacent side to this 53 degrees. So this is the angle, this is the adjacent side, that's the opposite side. So what I would have to do is I'd have to consciously say, oh, because this is pointing to the left, it's negative. You have to put the negative sign in there. So you'd have negative 15, well, negative the magnitude of vector a times the cosine of 53 degrees. So the magnet, so keep your negative sign, 15 units times the cosine of 53 degrees. And so what do we got? Negative 15 times the cosine of 53 degrees, you get negative 9.03 units. So that's the x component. And then the y component, because it's pointing upward for this vector, then it's going to be positive. That's the value of the magnitude of vector a times the sine. 53 degrees sine because it's the opposite side from the angle. So a sub y is going to be positive 15 units times the sine of 53 degrees, and a sub y therefore is equal to 15 times the sine of 53 degrees. This is my calculator, and I get 11.98, positive 11.98 units. So. You can see I get exactly the same numbers and I get the same signs. Normally you would define the angle relative to one of these closer axes. Now if you, if you define the angle in this direction, what you would do here is you would, instead of using this as your right triangle, you would use, Let me use some other color. Well, I guess I have to, I'm going to use, I'm going to change the color here in a second. So you'd have that as a sub y, and this is a sub x. i make this a little longer, I guess. So a sub y is still positive, a sub x is still positive. This, this is, uh, 37 degrees, 53 plus 37 is 90. In this case, the difference is that the, the, a sub a, the x is the opposite of the angle, and the adjacent 
the vertical is the adjacent angle. So you get it all correct. You still have to make these conscious decisions about sign. It's still a right triangle with an angle less than 90 degrees. So you get positive numbers when you do this, these angles. And you have to, you know, visually figure it out. So if, if, if you were doing it from a green perspective here, the green angle, what you would do is you'd say a sub x is, well, you'd say, okay, it's, it's going negative x direction, so we'll put a negative sign there. You take the magnitude of vector a, the length of vector a, which is 15 units, and you would multiply by the sine, sine of 37, because this is the angle, this is the opposite side. So you get the sine of 37 degrees. And you'll get negative 9.03, same answer. Um, a sub y is going to be positive because it's going up this way. It's going the same direction as positive y direction. Magnitude of vector a times cosine of 37. I'm using cos cosine because the, the vertical component is the adjacent side to the angle. So that's going to be 15 units times the cosine of 37 degrees. And you plug that in there, and you'll get positive 11.98 units. So you get the same answer no matter which way you do it. No matter which angle you do it relative to whichever coordinate system, you just have to look at the diagram and figure out whether it's positive or negative. If you do your angle relative to the positive x-axis, then you don't have to worry about uh, signs. Or you don't have to worry about, you know, the, the, the sign will come out naturally. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. Oh, uh, one, yeah, one additional thing. Um, yeah, okay. I've got a few more things to talk about. Um, you don't necessarily have to have the, the components being parallel to the two coordinate systems. So let me just demonstrate what I'm talking about. And we never use, well, we'll do that one time in class just to prove something. But uh, otherwise, 99.9% of the time, we always use the x and y because it just makes sense. It's the easiest thing to say. But let's say I have this vector a. If I wanted to, well, the standard thing would be to make it the sum of these two components because they're parallel and perpendicular. But let's let's make another. Uh, let's let's take the, the coordinate axes. Group those together, and then I'm going to clone it. So I'm going to make a separate coordinate axis. Okay, so there's my coordinate axis. If I take that thing and I rotate it like that to any angle, what I can do is I can I can do the components relative to this rotated coordinate system. So I could have I could break this original vector here up into a core a vector along this coordinate axis, which is rotated relative to the x and y, and, and then this would be the y component relative to what I could, I could call this. Um, this is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. I could call this the x prime axis, and this is the y prime axis. So I have one component along the x prime axis, and one across the y prime axis. The, the key thing is they have to be, these are two have to be mutually perpendicular, so you always end up with um, components. So what I could do, uh, I could call this, I could call this a sub x, and this, this vector a sub y, and I could call this a sub x prime, and this one a sub y prime. And so this vector plus that vector goes to there, and this vector plus that vector goes to the same point, and so, it, you know, it's the same thing. It's saying, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to leave it there for the moment. So you can, you can have your vectors, you can have your coordinate system rotated with respect to what's normally vertical or horizontal, and there's no, there's no issues there. They just have to be mutual, the two axes have to be perpendicular to each other, that's the key thing. Thank <laughs> you.
Okay. Now, if you have two vectors, so let's have a vector A, and I have a vector B. And for vector A, I have an X component, and I have a and a Y component. We're not adding them together. We're just saying there's an X component and there's a Y component. And for vector B, there's an X component and there's a, a Y component. So the resultant vector, let's say the resultant vector is the sum of these two vectors. We do that graphically. The resultant vector has an X component. And it turns out the X component of the resultant vector is the sum, algebraic sum, of the X components of the original vector. And the Y component of the resultant vector value is equal to the sum of the Y components of the vectors. So to find the resultant vector, a lot of times what you do of a two, this is normally the way do we do it in calculus, is we take the original vectors, A and B, we use geometry to calculate the values of the components. We add the components together to get the X and Y components of the resultant vector. And then you can find the magnitude of the resultant vector by Again, using the Pythagorean theorem, you add the, some of the squares of the resultant vector, the components of the resultant vector. And the angle is going to be the inverse tangent of the ratio of r sub y over r sub x. So we break it up into components, add the components, and then reconstruct the resultant. So what's going on here graphically? Let me just show you how that thing works graphically. So let me define a vector A, which I want to call. I'm going to say this is vector A. And vector A has two components, the x component and the y component. Then you have vector B, which I'm going to put right here. And vector B has an X component, which is positive, and then that Y component, which is negative. Now, what we showed earlier was just looking at the, the original vectors and doing it graphically, all we have to do to do A plus B is we take vector A, we add on vector B, and the resultant vector is whatever, is all vector R. So this is vector R. This is vector A. This is vector B. So vector A plus vector B is, is the resultant. Now, if we take the x component of vector A, and we add the x component of vector B, you get this. So let me use blue again, but actually I'm going to use black, but I'm going to change the color of that vector here. So OK, I'll change that to blue. OK, so this vector here is, this is R sub x. That's the, the x component of vector A plus the x component of vector, so the x component of vector A, which is this thing, plus the x component of vector B, that added together gives me the x component of the resultant vector. If I do it from y perspective, I take this vector, and I add this vector. So the way that works is you add vector A to vector B, 
you get that. So this is vector A, Y component plus vector B. So what we end up with is this resultant vector. This one right here, change the color. Okay, vector A, Y component plus vector B. That gives me the X component or the Y component of vector B. So that's, I'm going to put that right there. Move this back over to here. Move this one over to, not that one, this one back to here. Okay, so the blue line, the blue dashed line right there is our sub Y. That's the resultant vector Y component. It's the algebraic sum of the Y component of vector A and the Y component of vector B. And let's just group those two together here. Put that together. That's one thing. Okay, put this back. Put the X is back. So if I take R sub X plus R sub Y, I get the same result in vector. So you can add two vectors together graphically, or you can break it down to the components, add the components together to get R sub X and R sub Y, and then you can add those graphically. The, the advantage of this versus this and that, A, and A plus B versus this, is this is now a right triangle, so that's why you can use these expressions for that, and that'll give you the new, that'll give you the angle of the resultant vector relative to the x-axis. And if you have more than two vectors, you just do the same thing. You just, or not two vectors. Yeah, if you have more than two vectors, or if you have three components, if you have an x, y, and z component, then you, you're going to have x squared, r sub x squared plus r sub y squared plus r sub z squared. The angle is a little bit more problematic because you've got to decide where you're going to define. You've got to define two angles instead of one angle. So in uh, algebra-based physics, we basically deal with this. We just we don't typically add vectors graphically to solve problems. We take the vector, we break it up into its components. So let me, we typically do this. We take the vector, knowing its magnitude and direction, calculate the components, add the components together to get the components of the resultant vector. And then the fact that this resultant components are part of a right triangle allows to use the Pythagorean theorem with the definition of tangent to get it all worked out. Okay, so we're going to stop there.